Go on, please. On July the 6th, 2008, Rafael Nadal beat Roger Federer in an epic final to win his first Wimbledon title. The Spaniard dropped to the ground, exhausted and relieved. It was a childhood dream realized. However, had he made a different decision in his formative years, it's possible Nadal's sporting triumph that summer could have come seven days earlier, in Vienna. It was there that Spain's footballers beat Germany to win Euro 2008, and in a parallel universe, Rafael Nadal may have been lifting that trophy alongside Fernando Torres, Xavi, Andres Iniesta and the rest. It's not such a big leap of imagination. As well as a tennis prodigy, Nadal was a talented youth footballer, scoring, by his own reckoning, around 50 goals a season for his local Mallorcan team, even though he played as a left winger and was the youngest in the squad by a year. Nadal began playing football competitively aged seven, but as young as four, he was able to correctly identify the badges of every Spanish top-flight club. In his 2011 autobiography, he wrote, My dream was to be a professional footballer. Even though I was playing competitive tennis too and doing well, I always got more nervous before a football match. I guess it was because I wasn't playing for myself alone. I felt a sense of responsibility toward my teammates. Nadal's passion for football was encouraged by his uncle, Miguel Angel Nadal, who was a stalwart of the Barcelona defense in the 1990s and won 62 caps for Spain. He signed his first pro deal with Real Mallorca on June 3, 1986, the day Rafa was born. Although he ended up supporting Real Madrid, Barcelona's fierce rivals, the schoolboy Rafa took huge inspiration from Uncle Miguel's success. It inspired him to take his football very seriously, dissecting his own performances from a young age and provided early lessons on fame. He gave me a glimpse of the life I was to live, Nadal later wrote. He made money and became famous. He appeared in the media and was mobbed and cheered wherever he went but he never took himself too seriously. He always remained a modest and straightforward person. I'm very much aware now that everything that's happened to me is not because of who I am, but because of what I do. But of course, it was to be another uncle who would mold the prodigious youngster into the steely adolescent and world-class tennis talent he became. Tony Nadal was inspired to take up tennis aged 12 after watching Ilya Nastasi win the Barcelona Masters in 1972. He was, by his own admission, a solid player at national level, but lacked the aggression and commitment he would later instill in his nephew. Rafa was four when he first joined the group of youngsters Tony was coaching at the local tennis club in Manacor, over the road from the family home. It was the start of an alliance that would last almost 30 years and reap dozens of trophies. From an early stage, Rafa looked very comfortable with racket in hand. Tony, though, was determined to push him out of that comfort zone. He didn't force Rafa to play left-handed, as some accounts of his early life claim, but he would hit balls at his nephew if he thought he was losing focus. He would single him out in front of the others. It would always be Rafa who swept the courts and collected the balls at the end of sessions. And when they played first to 20 points together, Tony would sometimes allow Rafa to reach 19 before upping his game and beating him. These blows to morale served a purpose, to toughen Rafa up and teach endurance. Tony was tough on me right from the start, tougher than on the other children, Nadal later wrote. If he hadn't singled me out for especially harsh treatment, if I hadn't cried at the injustice and abuse heaped on me, maybe I would not be the player I am today. Put up with whatever comes your way, learn to overcome weakness and pain, push yourself to breaking point but never cave in. If you don't learn that lesson, you'll never succeed as an elite athlete. That is what he taught me. Tony said in a 2010 interview, from when he was little, I made it so that things didn't always go smoothly. So unlike other kids today, he has learned that things don't always happen the easy way, not right away. I always set him short-term goals. Every day, he needed to be better than the previous one. That's more important than technique. What got Rafa through Tony's tests were his love of the game and his uncle. In fact, as a young boy, he believed in his uncle so much, he thought he was capable of magic. I was an obedient and docile child, Rafa admitted. I trusted my uncle so implicitly when I was little that I even came to believe he had supernatural powers, like making himself invisible. 
During family get-togethers, my father and grandfather would pretend to me that they couldn't see him, so I came to believe that I could see him but other people couldn't. It wasn't until I was nine that I stopped thinking he was a magician. Rafa began playing competitive tennis age seven alongside his football, and success quickly followed. He won the under-12s Balearic Islands Championship aged just eight. The trophy remains on his mantelpiece alongside those he's won as a professional. By that stage, he'd spent more than a year training with Tony for an hour and a half a day, five days a week. No other boy in the tournament would have got near that level of commitment. Aged 11, Nadal started to shine at national level. He won the Spanish Under-12 Championships in the same year he reached the final of the Under-14 event. Tony, as ever keen to keep his nephew's feet on the ground, reeled off the names of the previous Under-12s winners and asked Nadal if he'd heard of them. Only five had become half-decent pros. The chances of you making it as a pro are one in five, Tony surmised. So, Raphael, don't get too excited about today's victory. There's still a long, hard road ahead, and it depends on you. At this stage, Nadal was training for tennis five times a week and traveling abroad to compete in tournaments while also still playing football. His team won the Balearic Islands Championship when he was 11, but it was clear something had to give, and two moments clinched it for him. A talk with his father, Sebastian, who reminded him that studying would need to be factored in too, and a new coach of his football team, who insisted selection was dependent on training regularly. Rafa could no longer guarantee that. In a filmed interview at the Spanish Championships, the young Rafa let slip a revealing remark. I enjoy football, he says, but that's just for fun. As he later said in his autobiography, I wasn't even 12 and I already had a career. It was around this time he first met Carlos Moya, who was in the top 10 and had not long reached the Australian Open final. The pair were both in Stuttgart for tournaments, and Moya was asked to warm up with the young Nadal. Moya remarked, People were already talking about Rafa in Mallorca when he was six or seven years old. After he'd won the Mallorca Under-12 Championships at the age of eight, a buzz began to be generated around him. I remember my trainer, Joffre Porter, who used to do some coaching with him too, telling me, this one's going to be good. By the age of 12, he was already one of the best in the world in his category. Fast forward 20 years and Moya became Nadal's coach after Tony left his camp in 2017. Family was very important to the young Rafa and remains so to the adult one. He admits he was fortunate to have a fairy tale childhood and the family's work ethic and close bond rubbed off on him. Every member of my family has contributed to who I am now, he said. One final anecdote remains central to the Nadal story. In 1996, a 10-year-old Rafa had enjoyed his school summer holiday with friends, barely picking up a racket. When the break was over, he entered a tournament in Palma, but lost 6-3, 6-3 to a player he felt he should have beaten. The young Nadal uncharacteristically burst into tears on the drive home. His father tried to tell him, it's not such a big deal. You've had a fantastic summer with your friends. You can't be a slave to tennis. Nadal bit back. All the fun I had then can't make up for the pain I'm feeling right now. I never want to feel this way again. 11 years later, in 2007, he uttered those words to himself again as he sat in his chair watching Roger Federer lift the Wimbledon trophy. It's a childhood sentiment that served him well 12 months later and beyond.